So I picked this up recently and I thought it would make a nice subject for a video. So what we have here is a rather uh, unassuming silver beaker or cup or tumbler with a nice little round foot and a neck. Nice cylindrical shape. Uh, I think it looks rather like an acorn. It's very cute. It's got very intricate decorations around the rim and it has a nice gilt or gold plated panel with birds and flowers and leaves, branches. This is a solid silver uh, drinking vessel. It's made of uh, made of silver and uh, gilt or gold plated and it's over a hundred years old. Now if this was English it would be fairly unremarkable I think but this is not English. This is in fact a piece of pre-revolutionary Russian silver. Uh, that means that this is an antique and it was made in Russia, in Imperial Russia, uh, before the Soviet Revolution of 1917, when the ruling Romanov family was deposed and the country fell under the grip of the Soviets, under the uh, grip of the communists. And when the, uh, when the country um, fell to communism, then all the uh, silversmiths, all the jewelers, uh, all the, um, all the uh, luxury retailers, all their businesses, all their stock, all their merchandise was nationalized. Um, there wasn't allowed to be any sort of uh, private ownership or private industry. Everything was owned by the state. And uh, a lot of the Russian silversmiths either were rounded up or they had to work for major national companies or they fled Russia. And they moved to places like France or Germany or uh, Britain, or they moved, even, some even moved all the way to uh, China. And uh, pre revolutionary Russian silver is therefore um, pretty rare. It's hard to get. I mean, you consider the history of Russia. You've got the Civil War, you've got the Revolution, you've got, um, you've got the. Second World War, you've got all the purges and everything done by Stalin in the 30s, 40s, uh, and early 50s. Um, so pre-revolutionary Russian silver is hard to get. And because of that, it does command a premium. And I can show you that this is pre-revolutionary Russian silver for two reasons. And those reasons are the hallmarks. And this one has two hallmarks. This is the first one. Don't know if you can see that. It says 84. And then it's got the uh, woman's head facing to the left. That is the Russian hallmark for 84 Zolotniki. Um, Zolotniki, or the uh, Zolotnik, was the Russian silver standard. So... It came in various grades. Highest grade was 91, then it went down to 88, then 84, and then it went you know, further on down, down, down. Um, I believe in the 1700s, the lowest grade permitted was 84. And so all Russian silver kind of varied from 84 to 91. So 84 Zolotniki is... Um, 87.5% pure silver, um, with the rest being copper. 
and then it slowly goes up from there. So you've got like uh, 88 Zlotniki is about 900 silver and then 91 is like uh, about 92, 93% silver, uh, which would be the closest equivalent to British sterling silver. Um, houses like uh, silver and uh, jewelry making houses like uh, the house of Peter Carl Fabergé, um, they only used 88 and above, but most Russian silver um, kind of varied between 84 and 88. So this is 84. And this mark, this particular mark was introduced in 1899. And then if you turn this over, it's got the maker's mark. And just like in most countries, uh, most European countries, the maker's mark is the maker's initials. So here we have, this is a Russian, uh, Russia uses the Cyrillic alphabet. So what you have here is the Russian AF for Alexander Fuld. And he was a Russian silversmith who lived and worked in Moscow for quite a long time. Um, I believe about 50 years. And so with just this mark and the other one, with no uh, date system, uh, and Rus Russian silver did have a dating system. Um, for some reason, there's no, um, there's no uh, date on this one, but usually it did have a dating system. So how do you date it? Well, like a lot of the silversmiths, uh, Alexander Fuld had to end his career in Russia in 1917 when the Bolsheviks came to power. So 1917 is the uh, last year that he could have made this. And then it's got the other hallmark which came in in 1899. So it has to be made sometime between there and there. So it'd be sometime in the first 10 or 15 years of the 20th century. So whichever way you slice it, this is at least 100 years old. And it's in beautiful condition. I mean, it's got a few blemishes from age. It's got like this here and a few spots. I mean, you can polish that off if you're really careful and you don't want to damage the silver. Um, what is remarkable to me above anything else is the fact that the gilded panel here has survived. I mean, you can probably see there's a few scratch marks and everything on it. Uh, like I said, this thing is 100 years old. But the fact that the panel has survived as well as it has without, with hardly any loss to the gold is pretty impressive. So this piece is three and a half inches tall, exactly. And it's lovely. Um, I, I really love it. And... Like I said, pre-revolutionary Russian silver is pretty rare. So when you get a chance to buy it, you don't ask any questions, you buy it. Um, that said, if you do want to buy pre-revolutionary Russian silver, it's best to get it from a reliable source, a uh, silver dealer of long repute or a reputable auction house. Uh, just because, like I said, because pre-revolutionary Russian silver is that rare, um, it's very prone to forgery and uh, being faked. People will. What they do is they take castings of hallmarks like this. And they recreate the, uh, the stamps or the dies that were used to punch the marks. And they will make fake pieces of pre-revolutionary Russian silver. And like I said, because pre-revolutionary Russian silver is so expensive, you know, you can blow a, you can blow a fortune on something, and then find out later that it's worth nothing. Well, it's not worth nothing, but it it's worth the weight of the silver. But um, it wouldn't be worth anywhere near as much as a genuine piece of pre-revolutionary Russian silver. Um, I picked this up at my local auction house, so I know it's I know it's genuine. And I think it's absolutely beautiful, and I wanted to share it with you. 
So anyway, thank you for watching this video and I hope you liked it. And if you want to see more of the stuff that I collect, stuff that I fix, um, then check out my other videos or have a look at my blog if you're a fan of history or a fan of antiques and want to find out more. Um, I've got loads and loads of articles covering all kinds of stuff and you're very welcome to go and have a look. The link to my blog is in the description section beneath this video. Thank you very much for watching.